So another use case for XML collections is when you want to import data from a CSV file and then create child objects for a major business object using the XML collection that's created when you import that CSV file. So here we have a shipping list and this shipping list has several columns in it and a few rows and when we import that we want to create a new uh, child object for each item in the shipping list. So here's what that will look like when we uh, import it. So when we import that, the XML that gets created has a format that's predetermined by ShareWell. And so we're going to have to do some manipulation. We're going to show you some of this XML manipulation we have to do in order to find out what each one of these fields, because you can see the columns are not listed as an element here. They're listed as an attribute of an element within each object. So let's break this XML down for you. So first of all, we have objects within the CSV file came in. And then each object has two elements, the main element, TN, and then the second element, which is where all the data resides, is MS. Within the MS are the fields, and they have the fields are just called, or the columns. And the columns each have a name, and the name is listed under the attribute of N. So the attribute N is column for item, attribute N equals quantity is that column for quantity, and so forth. So in this one step, we have one step here called importing shipping list. And when we run it, then it brings up and it shows us that this is what we have. And then it's going to walk through. So we're going to show you what that looks like in the actual CSV field. And we'll show you down here. So when a shipping list gets imported, it creates these child objects right here. And then each of them has the data listed within the CSV file. Well, let's go break that one step down. First thing that happens is run a PowerShell script that will convert the CSV file into XML and store it in a variable called XML output. Once they run that PowerShell, they can then read that XML data into the XML collection. So we now create a variable called XML file output with the data type of XML collection. And then our properties are simply the XML output, which is the file that was created by our PowerShell script. We already showed you that we just had a pop-up so we can see that we did get data. You don't have to put a pop-up in your one step. Once we've created the XML file output or XML collection from our CSV import, we can step through that collection using the step through collection action. And Sherwell needs to know what we're going to call each item in the collection. So if you'll recall, this CSV file import creates a set of objects. So we'll just call each item in the collection a current object. The purpose of this step through collection is to create new shipping list items, which are child objects of our RMA object. So the first thing we'll do is just create a blank shipping list item. We'll make that current, but we won't add any data to it at this point. We'll do that in our next step, where we're going to parse that object as an XML collection itself. How do we do that? We use the same step through collection. We select our current object as the item to step through, but now we need to modify that. And the way we modify that is there's a set of modifiers when you right click on it, and one of them is called find element collection. And the element collection we're looking for is the collection of fields, which in this case is called MS. And because we're dealing with fields, we'll just call each one of those items the current field. We step through the field objects. And the first thing we do is we want to get the field name. So we're going to set a variable called uh, of text type called current field name. And the modifier for our current field there is string from attribute. And if you'll remember, all our field names were under the attribute of n. So in, all we have to do 
there is use string from attribute within to identify the value for that attribute we need to modify current field and this time we can just use the text between text between is the data that comes in between the close bracket or the greater than sign and the end bracket or the end tag which is the less than sign the slash and then the major object or the field so this is s that'll bring us the data for that actual field and now since we have a finite number of fields we can simply step through those fields and use a case statement to update our fields in that current RMA shipping list item so all we do there is we come in here and we say this one had a field name is equal to item this one is field name equals quantity this one is field name equals note and we just go over and we take the field that we've decided to use and it's in the shipping list items and we set it to that current value which was the value we grab we extracted from the XML field object and then the last task is we need to clear that current field name so as we iterate through the field collection I hope this has been an informative video for you if you like the content of this video please feel free to comment below and also please subscribe to our channel beyond 20